Guru Nation, welcome back to the theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, all that good stuff. Share it with a friend, okay? Uh, it means a lot to me that you're watching. So, today's topic comes from the many conversations I have in any given day with potential clients, current clients, wh whomever is interested in starting a research clinic. There seems to be a lot of you. Good. We need more of that. Uh, because we need more research naive physicians, and I, I'm going to go on a long rant on this on my podcast. So go to Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru on iTunes or on Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts, okay? iTunes primarily. So I'm actually do like a 30 minute one in depth today on this topic. But for this video, it's going to be the Cliff Notes versions. Why, how, or should you partner with someone in clinical research? So look so many variables here right the first one I would suggest thinking about well there's a couple who are you obviously right like it sounds obvious but stick with me I'm getting somewhere so are you a PI are you a doctor are you gonna be the PI are you a coordinator are you a CRA are you just a business person that's not gonna be involved you need to know because you need to figure out can you do this on your own and just hire people or do you need to partner with someone there's pros and cons to all of this so I prefer that you go in business on your own okay now I for the first five years of owning a site I was by myself and then I brought in partners and then we expanded and we started opening different clinics so now I actually partner with uh, people all the time all right uh, in fact, the only business where I'm the sole owner is the Clinical Trials Guru LLC. Everything else I have a partner with. But I'm, we're pretty selective now, myself and Chris, uh, on who we partner with. And you should be too, okay? Background checks before you do anything else, right? But first and foremost, you need to figure out who you are, what are you going to do. It's pretty important. And uh, why do you need to partner with someone? So is it money? right are you the PI if not you're gonna need a PI so how are you gonna pay them are you gonna be the study coordinator if not uh, are you are you gonna hire someone uh, if you are do you know how to be a study coordinator like it sounds simple this is the kind of conversations I have every day so you gotta answer all these questions right then you gotta answer where is your clinic gonna be Right? Is it going to be in the in your PI's private practice? Did you rent your own space? Do you own a building? Are you the doctor? Are uh, do you have a friend who who has some space? You need about sixteen hundred square feet at least. Okay, go to my tab on the blog, start your own clinic, uh, with or without my help. It's going to line out everything you need as far as square footage, equipment, all that stuff. So these are things to consider, and then. Finally, location. So where are you, the owner, or one of the owners, if you're partnering with someone, uh, relative to the research clinic? Where are you? And these things are important because, yes, you can be an owner uh, that manages everything remotely. It's a lot more difficult, and it gets a lot more complicated if you have partners because then there's some resentment that gradually builds up over time where they're asking themselves, well, why are we partnered with this person if they're not even here? What is their value? You need to discuss all these things up front and then protect yourself with contracts. So you're going to have to get attorneys involved uh, if you go the partnership route, which is why I prefer if you can, if you can afford it, you do it yourself, okay? Don't uh, and then you can partner later. Partner with people later, like on your second clinic, on your third clinic, when you expand, then partner. But some people have no choice. Some people they want to partner with someone either because it's it, it's a physician and they need a PI, or it's a physician and they have a private practice where the research is going to be done, so they don't want to pay rent, or they are a physician and they're partnering with a study coordinator because they don't want to do all the work and they don't want to manage the study coordinators. Uh, so they'd rather give them equity in the company and hopefully that helps them manage themselves. Be careful, okay? Never make assumptions. Always know who you're getting in business with. So I recommend you do it yourself and then partner later once you figure out what you're doing. 
Um, but if that's not the case, do background check. Make sure you know who you are and who you're partnering with, okay? And if it's family, I mean, I've seen in the three years I've been consulting, I've seen two families so far, probably more, but two that I can remember off the, off the top of my head that got into nasty uh, disputes over the business, even when the businesses were doing good. Sometimes even before the businesses got started, right? So you want to be careful when mixing family with business. Again, I think it's okay. I started with my dad way back in 2005. He was the PI uh, for a year, and then we, we brought in other PIs, and he eventually retired. Uh, you've got to know who you are, and then you've got to know who you're partnering with, always, whether they're family, friends, or a stranger. If they're a stranger, you better get some contracts and get some legal representation in place. You better do some background checks. Uh, so how? How is, how is interesting? And the how, let's say that you've decided that you are going to partner with someone. Well, so you've answered the why. Why? You should, you should be satisfied with this answer. Why can't you do it on your own? Okay. Well, I don't have money to pay rent, and I need a PI, and I can kill those two birds with one stone by partnering with a PI. Great. That's cool. So that's your why. So as long as you know that. So then how? Okay. Now these other things come into play. How? How to partner? What's fair? Is it 50-50? If you're partnering with a PI and you're using their office and you're using their staff uh, and they're the ones responsible for the conduct of the study but they don't know what they're doing so then your, your responsibilities are managing and running the trials. Is 50-50 fair? I don't know. Is it? Uh, you've got to ask yourself other questions. Who's paying the study coordinator? Or are you going to be the study coordinator? Uh, who are, are you contributing at all to the rent? Are you even in the same location? And can you be at the clinic on a daily basis or at least a couple times a week? I have a lot of clients that are CRAs that want to open their own research sites on the side. I think that's great. By the way, call or text me or email me if you're interested in doing this. We can help you out. Uh, but the problem is they meet all these doctors and then they partner with someone, they live in Atlanta, but they open a site in Denver, Colorado, and they can only get there once every quarter. And so 50-50 is not fair in that case. I mean, what are you actually going to be bringing to the table? So in that case, I would say it'd be more like 75-25. Now, if you're contributing financially at all, that's a whole nother ball game. I think 50-50 would be fair. Uh, but if you're not contributing financially, if you're just contributing your sweat equity, and work, uh, then maybe a little less, unless you're there every day. Like if you're going to be the main study coordinator, right? If you're not, you got to go a little less. So a lot of variables, okay? But hopefully you get the point. Like there is no answer. There's no roadmap. There is only suggestions. Um, and every situation is different. I mean, I have never seen the same situation play itself out uh, twice. It's just everything's different. There might be a lot of similarities, a lot of concepts that you want to avoid, uh, but for the most part, you've got to figure it out as you go. That's, that's one of the risks of being an entrepreneur, right? You've got to have to make decisions and take risks and maybe not even get rewarded for your risk, okay? And I'm literally going to go record a podcast right now on this topic so I can go much more in-depth. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you go to the blog and then go to iTunes, random musings from theclinicaltrailsguru.com. Take care.